Hi everyone, this is Mikhail Botvinnik against Tiger and Petrosian, which was played in Moscow in 1963. It was match 18 of the World Championship match between them. Botvinnik had been world champion for about 15 years at this stage, with two brief interruptions of one year, when he lost and regained his title against Smyslov in 57 and 58, and then Tal in 60 and 61. Botvinnik was a, a universal player and strong in almost all areas. Petrosian was nicknamed Iron Tigrand because his defence was virtually impenetrable. He emphasised safety above all else and never attacked unless he was sure it was safe to do so. He had a patient and prophylactic style of play that restricted his opponent's moves, which often frustrated them and caused them to make mistakes upon which he would often counter-attack ferociously. He was arguably the hardest player to beat in the history of chess. After 17 games in this world championship, Petrosian was leading 9-8, and it was a slender advantage, because if the scores ended up tied, then Botvinnik would retain his title. In this game, Botvinnik had to play for a win, as he didn't have many games left to play with the white pieces, and what followed was a masterpiece of prophylactic defence from Petrosian. He manoeuvred with great skill, in particular to ensure Botvinnik's e4 break could never gain an advantage. And in actual fact, Petrosian ended up winning the game, and it was this game that, for all intents and purposes, secured the title of world champion for him. The game opened with a queen's gambit declined. d4, d5, c4, e6, knight c3, bishop e7, c takes d5, e takes d5, bishop to f4, c6, e3, bishop f5, and g4 which is aggressive from Botvinnik and also maybe slightly risky White gains space on the king's side here but he uh, also creates a couple of weaknesses notably on h3 and f3 so then came bishop e6 and h3 just to ensure that g4 doesn't become a target for black and then knight f6 knight f3 knight on b to d7 bishop d3 knight b6 Queen c2, knight c4, and king f1. And this was typical of Botvinnik's play, with a strong fr thrust like a g4, followed by consolidation and hoping to cement a position and use his face advantage to generate attacking chances. This game's been thoroughly analysed over the decades, and another line at this point, instead of king f1, was the wild knight g5, which leads to some crazy continuations after knight takes g4 which is okay because this knight's hanging it's only defender once and attack twice so knight takes f7 king takes f7 h takes g4 bishop takes g4 e takes d5 c takes d5 bishop takes h7 queen b6 knight takes d5 rook takes h7 is okay here because if knight takes b6 then rook takes h1 as mate so, rook takes h7, it's the strongest continuation. After queen takes h7, queen a5 check. Knight c3, knight takes b2, bishop d2, and bishop g5. Is, um, you know, I mean, it's a crazy and wild continuation, and, you know, it's one line to consider, but in reality, no one is going to play in such a risky way at this stage of a world championship, especially when with the white pieces it's possible to build up a slight advantage with slower or more positional play. Botvinnik's move with king f1 was fine because black can do nothing constructive immediately. And castling, instead of playing king f1, uh, only lessens his edge already obtained by simply having the white pieces. So it's, uh, it's fine. All things considered, and considering the situation the two men were in, King F1 is a fine move. So then came Knight D6 from Petrosian and Knight D2. And here the Knight G5 variation isn't especially sharp anymore. After, say, for example, Bishop D7, Knight takes H7, Knight takes H7, Bishop takes H7, G6. Bishop takes d6, bishop takes d6, bishop takes g6, and bishop takes g4. Then, um, Petrosian has good compensation for the pawn. 
but he's got to be careful here about move order say for example if instead of bishop takes g4 he plays f takes g6 and then queen takes g6 it's very strong for white then we come king e7 because the king's in check queen g7 check king e6 f4 and here Petrosian would have been forced to play bishop takes f4 and then he takes f4 and white's winning he's got three connected pass pawns if he doesn't take here with the bishop so if he just plays bishop e7 then f5 check king d6 is the only move and that's why the bishop moved to allow the king some breathing space but queen e5 is mate so Petrosian would have been have to be careful about move order but he would have seen that definitely so anyway Barbanik didn't go for that variation and he instead played knight e2 and then came queen c8 from Petrosian which you know is apparently a waste of a tempo because the game continued king g2 knight d7 f3 g6 I'll go over all this in a second and rook a c1 knight b6 b3 and queen d7 it's taken the queen two moves to get to d7 when it could have got there in one move from d8 and the only reason for it moving, moving was to allow the knight to come here but uh, Petrosian's got a couple of ideas in mind when he plays queen c8 here um, because white replied king g2 is and this is where black regains the tempo that he lost there by moving his queen twice to get to d7 at this stage after queen c8 Botvinnik has to figure out if the king is safer on f1 or g2 and if the position stays closed then g2 where the king is now is probably better on the other hand what Petrosian has to consider is the possibilities if the position suddenly opens up white's most dangerous plan here is f3 followed by e4 with the king on f1 in that variation black would have no counterplay but if it is on g2 then there are chances along this diagonal after these pawns are gone the bishop can come in here or the queen can swing up here and uh, also possibly after g6 and f5 the g file could be opened and there'll be threats for the rook and maybe the queen and this other rook if the Trojan castles queen's side also sacrifices on g4 are not completely out of the question say bishop takes h takes and then a queen a dangerous queen check although this would be unlikely from Petrosian it's also an outside possibility so while things considered the king is not as safe on g2 and that is why Petrosian uses the tempo getting it there and the reason it's not safe on or it's you know if it stayed on f1 then if this pawn were ever to move then the bishop can take h3 with check and also the um, this possibility of an open f file after e4 is played and if the king is on f1 then there's some tactical threats there too so the king anyway is lured to g2 and consider what would happen if uh, Petrosian doesn't play this queen c8 but instead oh sorry yeah queen c8 if he instead plays knight d7 then after f3 g6 e4 d takes e4 f takes e4 and white is well set for an attack with total central control so with queen c8 here what we are seeing from Petrosian is an extremely subtle demonstration of how to prevent the slight disadvantage that black has in chess simply from white move, having the first move turning into a substantial disadvantage with queen c8 he stops that from happening so it's excellent prophylactic play okay that's the end of part one thanks